Hey guys, so I wanted to show you guys how to scrape what industry and sector a stock belongs to from Yahoo Finance. And I wanted to do this because I want to separate stocks and group them into sectors and industries. If you go to Yahoo Finance and under the profile tab, we can find what sector and industry this ticker belongs to. So I'm going to build a function where I will pass in the ticker and I'll scrape this information. So if you just highlight sector, and click inspect it'll take us to where this is located at so here we'll do our function again we're just passing the ticker and what we will need is our URL so you will paste zero go back to Yahoo Finance We'll grab this link. We'll insert quotations and then insert the link. And anywhere you see the ticker, we're going to put an X. I'm going to put some quotation marks here, comma, and then comma after the X quotations. Same thing with this X. And some quotations. The next thing I want to do is read in this URL. So I'll put suppress warnings. Sometimes it cannot find the ticker. So I just want to suppress any warnings that pop up. I don't want those displayed. And then we'll use read HTML. And we're going to insert the URL here. So just to make sure this is working. I'll set x equal to Google. I'll run this line to get URL and then I'll read the HTML. So now we have this list. So if we go back to our Yahoo Finance website, we see that we need to call in this div class, p class, and then search for span, and then we should be able to find what sector this belongs to. So here I'll test it out. So first pass in the HTML text. We're going to insert some pipes. We'll use HTML nodes. And what this basically does is it's going to insert this into HTML nodes. So it's the same thing as running. It's the same thing as writing HTML nodes, passing in A, and then and then where it's located. So that's what this does. So again, it's a, we're passing into HTML nodes. And then it was located in div, and then p, and then span. So if we hit enter, we get this nice list, and we see that communication services is located under the second, I believe this is a list, so under the second list. So in order to retrieve that, we'll pass in pipes. I'm sorry, this is the sector, and we want to retrieve the industry. So the industry is internet content and information, and we see that under the fourth list. So we'll write period brackets four for the fourth list. And now we get internet content and information. So we don't need all of this. We just want to retrieve the industry. So Arvest has a nice HTML text function. So now we get what we're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna copy this. So this is gonna be our industry. And then I want to convert that into a data frame because I'm going to combine the sector and the industry. So we'll do industry. So we'll take a look at industry here. Now it's under a data frame. All right, so we're going to repeat the process for sector. 
And if you remember, it was located under the second list. So we'll just need to replace that four into a two. Go ahead, write sector, sector, sector. So we'll run these lines. And it's under communication services. It's under communication services, good. I'm going to change our ticker here because I want to combine the ticker, the sector, and the industry into one single data frame. So I'm going to convert the ticker into a data frame and then change the column name of that to display ticker. And then finally, I'll just return the combined data table as ticker sector and industry. So we'll run that, change the column name, and then return everything combined. So here we have our ticker, sector, and then industry. And then finally, I just want to put a system sleep here. I'm going to set that to five seconds. I'm going to be requesting this data for a bunch of tickers and I don't want my IP address to get blocked. So I'll put a system sleep, and this will spread out the amount of time requesting data from Yahoo Finance. All right, so we'll delete this. I'll run my function. I'll have some tickers here that I want to request this data for. We'll just do Apple. Amazon, Google, Tesla, and then we'll do a ticker that's obviously non-existent. So then I'll request that data by passing tickers as a list. So I'll use LFI as list tickers, my function that I'm going to pass through. going to be get S E C I N D. I'll pass an X as a ticker. And then I'm going to wrap this in a try. So that in case a ticker is not found, you'll still get the rest of them. And this block won't actually crash. It'll just return the ones that it did find it for. So we'll use this as if so if it does not inherit temp try error, just return a temp. And let's put this unknown ticker or non-existent ticker somewhere in the middle so that we see this in action. The function is called inherits, not inherit. We'll go ahead and retry that. And it's taking a while because remember we're shutting it down for five seconds. So now it looks like it came across this unknown ticker. So you get an error similar to this, but it's still running. All right, so now we have a nice list of five. And if we take a look at all, we see that everything has information except the third item, which is our unexistent ticker. So let's remove that. We'll just use all brackets, L apply, all, and we'll use length is greater than zero. So if the length is greater than zero, I want to retrieve it. If not, then drop it. So now we have a list of four. Now I'm gonna R bind this list by using do call R bind all. Run this line. Now we have a nice data frame with the ticker, the sector, and then the industry. 
right, so in the next video, I will group tickers by sector, and then we'll try and see what type of information we can extract. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope that it helped out, and as always, thanks for watching.